Hi there, it's Corrine from the Woolly Thistle and I'm checking in with you for a shop update. It's been a couple of weeks since we spoke so I have lots and lots to tell you. So we'll get stuck right into it. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who ordered a Harriet's hat set. That's Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight, six balls in a set uh, for the Harriet's hat pattern which was created to raise money for an MRI machine in Shetland and many of you answered the call. I gave all the profits from the sale of those sets um, to the charity and I was able to send off $1,300 recently, um, which was about £1,050. So you should be very proud of yourself. Um, I'm very proud of you and I really appreciate you buying your yarn from the Woolly Thistle so that we could support um, the locals in Shetland uh, get their MRI machine and I know they've still got a long way to go but they are on a roll and I think that they will do it in record time so thanks for your part in that and uh, so let's see uh, let's just get into what's coming in the shop um, we were out of stock of John Arbin's the annual we have those just back in today and this is only $7.50 and it's got four patterns in it, and it's, uh, it features um, Devonia four ply, as well as Knit by Numbers and a couple of their other yarns. I really love this shawl, modeled by Sonia. And there's Frankie who also works and designs for uh, John Arbin. So um, yeah, this is a great little book. And there's even uh, some artwork by our friend Katie, Katie Greenbean. Really fun, you can try and spot the cat. So there's that back in, and also with that, we got Devonia. We now have all the shades in stock. Whoops, and I don't have all of them right here to show you, but this will give you an idea. This is long wool, long staple wool from I think four breeds that are all um, local to Devon and then dyed and it tells us right three breeds actually is 50% Exmoor Blueface, 30% Blueface Leicester and 20% Wensleydale so this has got really nice drape and I got plenty of this in I like this one this is like a light denim color don't know if it's showing up as grey there it's a light blue and this is going to be nice for the fall. Isn't that nice? And it's a nice neutral. This is called Sandbar. And this lovely one is called Bleeding Heart. And then some of my favorite colors here. This is Nightshade. Purpley. I really like this and this might be what I end up knitting my Tegna in. What do you think? Yeah, I think that might be it. But I do like this gold as well. So, oh my gosh, I own everything I drop on the floor. So, yes, yeah, so that's in and I know some of you have already found it, but I wanted to let you know that it is in the shop now. And what else do we have? Oh, uh, Little Grey Sheep just arrived and I'm not sure if it's actually in the shop yet, but I think it is. So we have Hampshire DK in many of the different colors. And I've also got a bunch of the mini sets that are very popular. Those aren't in the shop yet, but they'll be going in probably tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow is Friday. I'm recording this on Thursday. So when you see this, they'll probably be in the shop. And I'm not going to crinkle this too much, but this is what you get. Five colors, and this is fingering weight or four ply. Um, dyed by Emma, who is the little gray sheep. And I've got several different um, combinations of yarn. So those will be going in the shop once they get photographed and hopefully will be in tomorrow. Those always sell out very quickly. No wonder they're beautiful and uh, good value. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Marie Wallen. So we have just got in all of her colors again in her British breeds. The more I'm in touch with this yarn, the more 
I love it. Sometimes she just needs to take a minute and, and look. And if you could smell this, <sighs> clean sheep, <laughs> very sheepy. This yarn is spun at John Arban and it's a blend of British breeds, including, let's see, she writes it on here. Blueface Leicester, Exmoor, Wensleydale, Wensleydale and Zwartbless or Zwarbles. This is the raw color, right? This is without dye. It's soft and glossy and quite loosely spun. Can you see? I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know if that's fuzzy wuzzy. So this is also spun by John Arban and also has some of the same types of yarn as this, but they could not be more different. I can't see if you can see that. There we go. See that? I think this speaks to the expertise of the mill and what they're able to do with very similar fiber and different blends. Yeah, so anyway, we have all the colors of this back in stock and this pairs with her Wild Wood book and this cover picture is the Hawthorne and um, has all the colors I just showed you. Uh, Marie's books are, are very beautifully done. They have a gallery up front with, you know, huge pictures of the different designs. Oh. And, and then in the back, the patterns. This one is not color work, but it's, it's just gorgeous. I think it's twisted cable, twisted stitches and cables and things. Yeah, they're better fun right there. Um, that makes me think. I did recently, a while back, but I haven't shown you, finished a Marie Wallen. I'll get that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me get organized here. Sitting on yarn. So this is um, a Marie Wallen design out of Bloomsbury, which is a book that we sell here. Um, the color reminds me of her of that picture I was just showing you. And this is a full cabled, uh, seamed together. And maybe actually I did show you this because now I'm remembering I went on and on about the seams because they're beautiful. What's that? It's an end I need to sew in. Yeah, so um, I hadn't finished sewing in the ends and apparently I still haven't, but I thought I had. And this will be nice in the fall. This was knitted out of Rowan felted tweed, which I sell as well. And uh, it's got some alpaca in it. I'm just trying to fix this because I think I messed it up. There we go. Okay, so yes, Marie Wallen is back in stock and uh, I wouldn't wait too long before, um, before that might be going out. So if you're interested in the book or any patterns in the book, we have all the yarn for that. Okay, um, Blacker Lioness, uh, we got DK in stock and we're getting more DK and we're getting more four plies. So all the lioness that we can get will be here soon. Hopefully next week because it's not here yet. So hopefully next week. And um, let's see, let me show you my socks because we had the sock knit along our first ever sock sprint. Ah, uh, are these cute? Look at the detail up there so these are shorties with a twisted stitch top and I th this was my entry for um, knitting in the sock sprint which I think was a lot of fun there was just a few of us in there but we had a grand old time everybody did great some people were on the third pair of socks in two weeks blimey so I knitted this this pattern is by Don Henderson who is Don.Landix on Instagram and probably is that on um, Ravelry too. I don't remember off the top of my head, but if you find her on Instagram, you'll then be able to find her on Ravelry, won't you? I don't have any sock blockers, but I'm, I have a plan to fix that. So I'll keep you posted. And uh, right, so very easy, beautifully written pattern, very quick to knit because they're shorties. Heel turn. Yeah, 
it's good. And I knitted this using uh, my fiber stash. This was my favorite colorway out of the lot we got, which is Slayers Every One of Us. Sorry, I'm figuring out this camera. <gasps> I just realized I've got the camera going this way. And for Instagram, I usually have it going that way. That'll be interesting. So yes, yeah, so we still have some fiber stash in stock. This is one of her Tweety bases. And this is Dirty Crayon box, which I think is very well named and a really nice color. I do like that. Here's another Tweety in a more solid gray. These are just a couple of the things that we've got from her. And I like this one too. This is on her Strong Toes, which is an um, 80-20 merino nylon. She's a Vermont dyer. And I've known her yarn for a long, long time. Knitted many pairs of socks. And they all last really well. So I wanted to support Fiber Stash and get them in here. And you've been enjoying her yarn. I only have a couple of skeins left of the Wooly Thistle colorway, so thank you for, uh, for buying that up. That was very encouraging. Thank you. It was very lovely. Lovely yarn job. Dye job. And what else? Brand new coming to the shop. I have very special yarn called Armscott Manor. Armscott Manor is an old house, a manor house built in the 1600s by a wool merchant. And it's got gardens and sheep, a lake on the property. It's, it sounds absolutely beautiful. And actually I've, I've got some photos on the product page of some, some views of it. And they raise and manage Portland sheep. And Portland sheep is one of the oldest sheep recorded in England. They even get a mention in the Doomsday Book, so they're that old. They're a very pretty sheep. Their face is very, very attractive. They only have usually one lamb, which I think has led to them being devalued and put at risk in terms of their productivity. But Deborah at Armscott Manor has been breeding them and creating wool from their fleece. And she gets it spun at the Natural Fiber Company, which of course is uh, blacker. So we know it's a good job. And she has a few um, Black Welsh Mountain sheep, which produce this color. Oh, I love this. And when you blend these two together in varying degrees, a splash of this, a splash of that, you start to get gray, which is like magic. Here, there's two grays, one slightly darker. Okay, so these are 50 gram balls and they're very, you can see they're big and lofty and I call this kind of yarn a very robust yarn um, so it's not going to be the softest yarn it's not merino but it's nice and round this is a DK weight you only have a DK weight and I think it'd be really good to knit a shawl such as this one here which we all know and love as the um, Tales from the Isle of Purbeck. This is a beautiful shawl that was designed by uh, Annie Claire, who is by Annie Claire on Instagram. She now lives in Vermont. She has a goat farm way up there. And uh, oh, this shawl, this shawl was originally designed for Hole and Sons, um, which is no longer available. Uh, but to my mind, it's a very similar type of yarn. And I think that, that this yarn would make a really great per bag shawl. Yeah, so that's an idea. But these are going in the shop and uh, will be available very soon. I hope that you support Armscott Manor with, with your purchase of these here. I think this is special yarn uh, from sheep that we don't normally find the wool of. 
and who go back to the Doomsday Book. And of course, Armscott Manor is in, um, is right outside or part of Stratford and Avon, which is where the Bard is from, of course. And I used to live in Warwick and Leamington Spa on my windy journey to America. So I know this area really well. It's a beautiful part of England. So yeah, I'm super excited to have this. They have a lovely logo. And I hope you're excited and we'll, we'll test it out for yourself. Also brand new coming or in the shop or coming in the shop any day <coughs> is West Yorkshire Spinners Croft in Solids. We have the um, modeled speckly um, version of this that's been around a wee while and now they came out with the solids. So this is an Aran white. It's Shetland wool from Shetland, Jameson's, Jameson and Smith. This is a collaboration with them. And there's several colors and I got all of them. I'm not gonna show you them all today. Um, some lovely, can't hold them all, but some lovely colors there. That would be a nice quick project being Aran white. So that's Croft, Shetland wool from Jameson and Smith, spun at West Yorkshire Spinners. British, British, British. All right. Um, I did get some cones in from Jameson and Smith. This is Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight, which we all know in the little 25 gram balls. But I do stock a few natural shades of, um, of the cones. These have, it's a 500 gram weight. And I think that means it's 1200 yards, but I'm guessing, I'm not sure. It's a lot. And so if you're going to be knitting a garment that is mostly this and maybe a color work yoke, this is a great way to go. Now, when you buy yarn on a cone, it's typically not washed. So it still has the oil from the machinery on it. And that doesn't mean anything except that it's for, for Shetland, it's not going to be uh, fluffy like it is in the ball. It's yet to bloom, it's yet to be washed. But I've knit several things straight from the cone. Um, and of course, I'm not a fussy knitter. I don't mind that it might feel a wee bit ropey. And, um, and I manage it accordingly. And then when you finish knitting and you wash it, it blooms and it's perfect. So just wanted to mention that we do have these and I'm happy to order uh, cones of a particular color that you might want because I'm always ordering from Shetland and I can just pop it in with my next order. So you can see uh, all the details for this in the shop. I think, I think that's quite a lot. Um, let me talk a little bit about what's back here. Um, right here is the socks I knitted J. These are the My Fair Feet pattern by Virginia Sattler Reamer. I wish I had sock blockers. Um, and I knitted these in what the pattern called for, which was Blacker Classic 4-ply. And remember I told you they came out too big for me. So they fit my J very nicely. And um, when you know it, I ran out of yarn. And also they stopped selling. They stopped making Blacker Classic just the, a week or two ago. So you can't, um, can't get this anymore. Typical. This was one of my favorite yarns. It's such a workhorse, rusticky yarn. And honestly, um, it's sort of reminding me, making me think of the Armscot. I don't know if this is sock worthy though. Anywho, so I wanted to show you these because I kept talking about them and never had them with me. So here they are, aren't they lovely? Recommend this pattern. Very nice, nice pattern. Very easily memorizable. So um, you can even, I could manage this social knitting, although I will confess that you knit it top down and I counted the number of twists in the cable and just kept going down this one and this one was shorter. And I think I didn't, I think I have fewer rows in between the twist. You know, maybe this one has five rows in between the cable and this one has what did I say? This one is six. Maybe this one has five. I don't know. But anyway, this one has more twists in it to get it to be the same one. But who knows? Nobody. Anywho, very nice. 
This was the apple greeny color. I love it. And Jay loves them. So that's good. And then also back here, I posted my Barra Cowl on Instagram. And look at all my ends. This is the wrong side, of course. And I did sew in all my ends because I'm very virtuous, virtuous knitter. Um, and so I'll be turning this all inside out soon. Here's, here's a picture of the right way round. Oh, yes. I haven't seen that for a while. It's been sat in my basket like that. It's gorgeous. And this is knitted, this is Marie Wallen's Burra Cowl knitted in Jameson Spindrift. And this is from her Shetland book, which we stock. And I have kits of these. And that's what I wanted to tell you is that I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, we'll have the um, Yale cardigan, the Bressa uh, sweater, more of these Burra Cowls, Scary Mittens, I think are still in stock as well as the Scalloway Tam. Most of that is out of stock, um, but I'm hoping to have all the yarn back in in the next couple of weeks. What, no yarn? <laughs> so, yes, lovely knit. And what I wanted to show you is I've knitted as far as the pattern calls for. So I've done all the repeats and this is all the yarn I have left from the kit. Some of these are tiny some of these are pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get another repeat out of this, make it a wee bit longer. I actually would love to make it twice as long so I can wrap it around my neck twice. I know I'm going to live in it. And because these are muted and darker colors, I don't think they'll show any makeup <laughs> when I wear this. I don't think uh, any makeup rubbing off will be a problem. Whereas my cream and gray one, um, which is the fullest nude, I didn't wear makeup last winter because I never went out because I worked at home. Um, but now that I leave the house, <laughs> I do put on a wee bit of face. So I think this will be, this will work. I wouldn't show up. Isn't that lovely? Ugh. I love my knitting. All right, so yeah, so there's still quite a bit left of that. So I think that is everything I wanted to share with you. I'm just looking at my notes. My goodness, so we went at this for 22 minutes. I have not rushed through this one because I do feel like I rushed through them to fit in the time on Instagram. Um, I'm not sure how this works with stories, if I try and put this up in stories, if I'll get it all up on there in little 15 second segments. I will put this up on YouTube as well. And I want to give away a $25 gift certificate um, to anybody who's watched all the way <laughs> to the end here. I'll do a wee giveaway of $25 to the Woolly Thistle. Um, all you have to do is uh, go to the YouTube channel for the woolly thistle and maybe leave a comment under this episode saying you made it to the end or tell me what yarn you liked um, to see here today um, or tell me what you'd like to see on on this shop update um, just help me help give you what you want um, and if you do that I will do a random drawing and will announce the winner on the next episode of this which will be in two weeks um, on Friday next week, we'll have an audio podcast, episode 101. Thank you everyone who left such lovely messages, especially on Ravelry. Um, there was a Ravelry thread for the 100 episode and my husband caught me reading your comments with a huge grin on my face because <laughs> it was really nice to read that so many of you are either brand new listeners but enjoying it or have been with me all the way from the beginning or um, who have binged when, when they did find the podcast. And I can't tell you, um, just, you know, it's been life changing uh, to, to start out with a wee podcast and be five years down the road with the Woolly Thistle and lots of really good friends that I never would have met otherwise. And of course, knitting, always knitting. So if you're on the fence about starting your own podcast, um, the sooner you start, the sooner you'll be better at it because <laughs> everybody's terrible when they start 
and uh, that's to be expected. But if you put it off and put it off, you'll never get there. So if you're thinking about it, um, there's room for everybody and uh, and I would love to see that. Anyway, so I think that's all I've got for you at the Willy Thistle right now. I'm sure there's tons of stuff I'm forgetting. Um, but hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have lots of new things for you. Uh, yeah, so do enter the giveaway on YouTube and leave a comment of uh, what you like about the podcast. Now that this is a podcast. What you like about the shop update, what you like, uh, what you would like to see in the shop update, what you'd like to see more of, what you can't be bothered with, anything like that. And um, I'll announce a winner in the next, in the next, I want to say episode because I'm used to podcasting, whatever this is, the next update. All right, now I'm waffling. So I'll let you go and thank you very much for tuning in and I hope to see you at the Willie Thistle. Take care. Bye.